Hello, it is Doc Hitchcock back again to solve yet another puzzle. And today we are going to be solving the buried treasury puzzle. So this is the second of a three part saga called the Buried City Saga. Three puzzles, uh, each sold separately. This is the second of which uh, I have not been able to get my hands on the first one. Uh, I don't know if the third one's out yet. It may be, but I have not seen that one either. However, this is the first one that I'm going to be able to solve today. And I'll tell you what, although it's been sitting in my backlog for a while because I've had so many things going on lately, I got to say, as soon as I unpacked it, as you can see here, I started to get pretty excited because it reminds me a lot of the immersive experiences that you get with one of my favorite games of all time. And that is... Mist. Mist is one of my favorite games of all time. Now, of course, the sequel, actually I'll say the sequel, Riven, is my favorite uh, computer game of all time. Not because it has the best graphics or the best uh, interface or whatnot. And, oh, by the way, this is a 25, uh, 25th year anniversary collector's edition Mist book. And it actually, I'll do another video maybe on this at some point, but you can actually open it up and there's actually a point in it which you touch it and it takes you to another world or whatever in a way. But anyway, I'll put that aside for now. But yes, when I look at this, it reminds me of the Mist games a little bit because you see that these notes are included, tickets, clues. I guess in a way there's a little bit of an ex escape room element to this. Um, but even the, even the packaging it came in here, if you see that, I, I didacted with black tape my address and the address of the, of the sender. Oh, and by the way, this is something that is made by someone named Micah Sawyer. That is the person I believe that is responsible for this. And even the packaging, you can see that we have a unique post stamp here that kind of is a little bit of a throwback in time. So I see even by the packaging, you start to set the experience to be more immersive. And so that is one of the things that I think is gonna make me really like this, despite the fact that it may be medium uh, difficulty, you might solve it quickly. That is not as much an issue to me. I, they don't have to be the hardest puzzles in the world to be enjoyable. But let's go ahead and get into it. Dearest father, you know that I write about my escapades in my journal because you like to read them. And so I wanted to allow you to read about my latest escapade regarding the saga of the buried treasury. And because we are going to be discussing all the details of my journey, Father, I would like you and anyone else who reads this journal to know that there's a spoiler warning. So there's going to be solves ahead, and if you don't want to see how the puzzle is solved, please click away. Always, all my love, your son, Doc. All right. So where do we begin? Let's go ahead and let's look at this package here. Great, <laughs> great packaging in, in this uh, paper with a little twine on top. So let's go ahead and open that, set that aside. All right, all right, what a beautiful piece. 3D printed, but the, the bronzing on it. It's quite nice. A little bit of patina on there to make it look a little aged. It's pretty weighty, actually. Interestingly, I, for a 3D printed piece here, I'm actually quite impressed at the quality of the print. This is quite nice. I'm trying to look for, uh, I'm trying to look for print defects and such. And there are, you're gonna find some like little things like that and stuff, but that's only if you're really looking. And frankly, I'm already impressed and it's already beautiful. I don't even know if I wanna solve it now. I just wanna display it. Just kidding, we're gonna solve it. All right, so I'm getting, I'm seeing, let's see. Again, some like hieroglyphic type cave painting maybe type. This looks like that same thing we saw on the side here. Some of that stuff going on hieroglyphics of some sort, not hieroglyphics, but symbols of some sort there. Like this one is very reminiscent on this side. So not sure exactly 
what to do from here. But we have some men on this side. Let's see if anything, that's definitely some symbolism going on here. We just gotta figure out what that symbolism is. It's a nice little elephant looks like in a, <laughs> maybe it's two houses, but that kind of also looks like an elephant in a tree in another house. I'm wondering if I'm supposed to mess with this. I can feel that there's these corners probably move. And it did say it's a sequential discovery puzzle. So there's supposed to be pieces and such that you can pull out and, and use. But you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and let's open this. Let's open the letter and see what's in here. I almost hate to open it because I don't wanna mess it up. It just looks so nice all packaged up like this. But I'm gonna carefully open that seal. Oh, wow. Even the way that he folded this paper, he didn't just fold it, or they didn't just fold it, they really went to pains to make it seem legit as far as the way that they packaged this. I gotta already give them an A plus on presentation. Already. Even if this turns out to be a sucky solve, I'm gonna say that A plus on presentation, I'm already won over. Even if we stopped now, I've already felt a little bit immersed in this world. Not quite sure what the world is. It's a little bit of a mix of Stargate and um, Sherlock Holmes era <laughs> uh, Hounds of the Baskerville, but let's go ahead and move on. Oh, we got a little newspaper clipping. So, and even the paper that this is on is different than the other papers. The choices of papers, uh, I, I gotta commend them. I'm sorry, I'm kind of gushing because it's, very refreshing. This was not super expensive. I think it was under 200 bucks. But I've gotten puzzles that are 3D printed that are around the same price. They were absolutely crap. I'm not gonna get into which ones they are, but I would never buy them again. I don't even wanna give them to somebody for free because I don't feel the puzzle solve is good. I don't feel the presentation is good. And the print is pretty crap as well. Now, I am not the one to shame anybody for trying to make a buck, but I will tell you that when you find something like this, where the person actually put some passion into selection of even the, the qualities of the papers and the way that they're printed and such. I mean, even looking at this, you can see, I'm not sure if, I'm gonna go up here because I'm not sure if you can see, but even the way here, it looks like it was ripped out of a newspaper or a piece of paper. Like they literally ripped this. They could have cut it, but they ripped it. They took the time to make it look like it was ripped out of a piece of paper. Uh, that's just cool to me. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and read this right here. Put this down here. All right, November 1st, 1892, from the desk of Tacron Amaros. And by the way, Tacron, I believe, is the screen name of the person that I had communicated with on the, the message boards that I bought this from. Explorer, President, and CEO of Tacron Amaros Incorporated. Good day, Doc Hitchcock. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Guys. I don't know if he made any money. Uh, I'm assuming Mike is a, is a gentleman, but uh, I don't know if they made any money off of this, but they've won me over. I'm definitely gonna buy their third puzzle. I wanna find their first puzzle. Uh, I'm gonna pretty much buy any puzzle because I got a feeling that Tacron, I'm sorry, Tacron or Micah actually probably likes this genre as well. But anyway, let's move on after that brief interlude. Good day, Doc Hitchcock. I hope this correspondence finds you well. As you have no doubt read in the papers, the excavation has struck gold, as they say. We have located an ornate orthogonal relief that appears to be to depict a vault of some sort, and other parties have wisely decided to invest in my venture. I'm guessing that's what this is. I'm gonna put that in the stand for now. Your notes on the previous artifact were satisfactory and the runic translations that prov you provided assisted. And look, uh, this must be a clue because uh, given the detail they put into this, I don't think that's by mistake, but it says assisted, and I'm assuming that's supposed to say greatly, but then they X'd out all the letters. Hmm. Oh, assisted greatly, it's X'd out and then in a small way. <laughs> in unlocking the outer door. We have begun to unearth and explore the cavern city. However, it is slow due to the significant rubble from the collapse from long ago. And something else is crossed out. We expect there may be a third artifact in the vault. 
I've included the requested second artifact along with a page of notes from the excavation and a rubbing of what appears to be a partial map. That, this is the rubbing, and here's the artifact. Uh, this object was located in an area we have dubbed the Treasury. Feel free to examine it as your leisure. We've not investigated it closely as my team and time are currently focused on locating the vault compound per our investor's direction. And now that's misspelled and I don't know if that's on purpose, a clue or something, but I don't care. If it's typo, forgiven. Um, this box does not appear to require any outside tools, striking, spinning of the box or significant force. It is an ancient relic, so do be careful with it. Most importantly, if you do find any information that helps may help us locate the vault, please contact me using the usual methods as quickly as possible. T-E-P-S. Please note that my comments above on your assistance were polite in nature and do not infer on you any portion of proceeds that result from fines of the above mentioned excavation. That's funny. Sense of humor. Love it. Guys, this is pretty cool. So the directions is actually, this is the directions as you would get in other boxes in a card or something that says, you don't have to use any other tools, striking or spinning, which everybody knows. I don't like spinning puzzles. I don't like banging puzzles. So uh, fresh, uh, refreshing to see that in this, man, in this way explained. Very immersive, really cool. Okay, I wanna set that aside. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, before we get into the, the rubbing of the map, I'm gonna go ahead and read this cutout of the uh, paper. Tacron Eremos, and then it has here Black Sheep Sun, but that's crossed out. So I guess he didn't like that. <laughs> of Community Pillar Catherine Eremos has reportedly located an ancient underground city full of wonders, sights, ingenious puzzles, and potentially fabulous wealth. In an exhibition on Tuesday, Tacron displayed multiple fantastical artifacts he claims were unearthed from this fabled ruin, and while Tacron refuses to disclose the location of his find, Multiple experts have confirmed that objects he has acquired appear authentic and from no culture currently known to the modern world. Tacron leaves next week via ship for the hidden site with renewed vigor and even some financial support from local businesses, uh, business people that were impressed with his findings and premises, promises of riches to come. Notably absent was Catherine herself, who has not been seen in public since her son's abrupt departure from the family business early last year. And then we have what looks like the letterhead of the paper, Shilling by Quanti published. Okay. So I'm not sure what all that means other than give us some backstory that he's gone to uh, discover fabulous wealth. All right, so let's take a look here. All right. And then this, by the way, on the back here, and now I'm not sure if this is on purpose, but on the back here, if you see, there's some writing and it is, um, it's hard to tell. Uh, it's, I don't think the name is Tacron down here. I don't think that this is, it looks like Tasman, but it's a little bit smeared and I'm wondering if that's on purpose. I think it probably is. So I'm gonna try and read it. So I think it says, thank you. Thank you, something, Professor J Jerton Johnston, for supporting the exhibition. Won't, of course, mention your involvement in something of any something for my mother but something know that I'm always in your debt. And I guess it is, I guess it is Tacron. Okay, so that's an interesting thing. I'm not sure if that does anything to help us solve this, but it's on the back of this ticket. Maybe it just adds to the immersion. So in the game Mist, you often find little notes like this that don't necessarily help you solve anything but just give you some of the backstory and help you to pull into this world that they've created for you. So, very cool. All right, so let's set that aside. Let's take a look at this. 
All right, so we have a little door here and it has that one symbol that we saw before. Many dwellings have markers nameplates above the entrances. They appear to be signposts. Okay. Two main symbols appear on most two lines drawn close. Okay, that's in quotes. So two main symbols appear on most of these doorposts. And it says two lines drawn close is in quotes. Two lines drawn quotes on most doorposts. So I think that's what is referring to these two lines that are drawn close together. And then this one here and then this one here. So we have, let's see if there's two different ones here. So we have one here, which is that one. And then we have this one here. Let's see if it's on here at all. That's the first one there. I think there's just a, yeah, there's a 3D printed. So you see one symbol. Oh, there it is again. Hmm. There it is again. I don't see that second one. Unless, unless that's that. Possibly. I don't think so. Anyhow, okay. All right, so then it says found near smaller enclaves, which contain sleeping areas, sleeping with the question mark areas, meaning they don't know if it's sleeping or not areas. The smaller symbols are always different. Okay, again, the way that the notes are being written pretty cool because he's writing them as if somebody who's taking notes would write them because they want to go back and they're calling it a sleeping area, but they're saying, I don't know if it is. I'll think about that and answer that question later. Again, great uh, design. Clan or family names. So he's pointing to these symbols here, saying are they clan or family names possibly? And then three lines, two angles. Okay, that's in quotes. And then he crossed it out and says same symbol, just crossed out. Okay, means opposite, possibly, question mark. Ah, uh, okay. So he's saying that this one is the same as this one, just crossed out and does it mean opposite or does it mean they made a mistake kind of like when they crossed out greatly in his own note. All right, found near large open areas, Bath's treasury area. And remember, this is called the buried treasury. No smaller symbols. Common areas, question mark. Vault likely used this symbol above it. And this, there's two different inks. So there's pencil where somebody was drawing, and then there's ink, and then there's other colored ink and then something down here findings as a result of said content are sole property of fine artifacts and curiosities again this looks like it was torn out of a notebook <sighs> another fine detail guys i wouldn't have even thought to do that he didn't even have to think to do that but it looks like it was torn out of a notebook great all right rubbing of a relief found near the treasury complex b i guess the nine or bg uh partial map then A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H, K, H, I, J, 1, 2, 3, 1 through 11. Vault, sealed column, glowing door, cool. Open public meeting area remains found. Oh, meaning dead body remains found. Homes, map, relief, artifact found. Okay, so this is where the artifact was found. This is the vaults, possibly, in this uh, sealed column here. Contents of this journal and all findings are of Tacros Hermos Incorporated Importer of Fine. <laughs> and then is that the other side? Fine Artifacts and Curiosities. Okay, so this is the other. Okay. So let's see. So how do we proceed here? Ah, and so interestingly, we have this ticket here and he crossed out main hall and he put hall 3C and I'm thinking 3C would be right here. Okay. Royal Academy. Opening an exhibition. Okay, so I don't see, that's the only clue I see on this. And then Professor, I think it's Johnston. 
But anyway, 3C. I'm gonna hold this up to the light really quick because I have a. I just wanted to see see if he had done anything extra cool with like invisible inks or watermarks or something. Oh. Oh, he did. Oh no, he didn't. <laughs> I got all excited because when you hold up to the light, you can see these symbols here through the paper, but they don't fall in three C. So C. Okay, so this is wiggly right here. So I'm interested. Oh, look at that. Okay. So my let me see if I can turn all. I can turn all of them. Okay. Oh, okay. No, I can't. Okay, so I can turn that. So these bottom ones I can turn. Oh no. You know, it's the only, so three of them I can turn. So this one has the same on two sides here. Oh, okay, so this one came off. Is that supposed to happen? I think so. It came off and it has like a, key of some, or not a key, but a shape of some sort. So we're gonna keep that off. Let's see if other ones come off. Not sure if that's just an artifact, no pun intended, of uh, how he made this or how they made this, but um, you can see that they're definitely, oh, interesting. Okay, so you can see as I'm turning this one, there seems to be like a symbol underneath as well. And this one possibly is also. Okay, so you got a man with a thing over his head and then another man smaller. I wonder if that's the same two guys. The houses with the symbol at the bottom. The, uh, the, looks like that symbol over there. And that is this symbol, I think. Yeah. It's a cavern city. Okay. So that means, so this is the cavern city. And so this must mean a, the earth above and then the earth beneath maybe. So this isn't really a cliff. This would be, where's that? Where did it go? Here it is. So this must be, they've gone, these are the people that live above in the land above this cavern city. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but you can see this one, this particular side thing, it wiggles, but it looks like it's a little bit above this one. If you look at it like that, it's almost like it wants to move that direct, like that direction. So, as you, so if you look at like this, you can see that this block here is flush with the middle, but there's like a, um, what you call it? There's a divot. <laughs> there's a little space in between. On this side, it's like they're fixed in place. Oh, so it makes me wonder if this whole Top. No, this one, this one actually is not connected. Or maybe it is, I don't know, I can't tell. <laughs> no, it's not, because you can see it moves. There you go. Okay, it's moving, it's, something's happening. Okay, something, you can see, look at that. So something's happening there. I don't know what to do here, okay. Okay, I don't want to pull, pull too hard, but obviously that one's coming out. Oh. 
Look, that moved as well. See? I think. Oh, well, look at that. So I'm pushing on that and the inside pushes in a little bit. Oh, I hear a spring, hear that? Okay, so this one obviously can move that direction. This middle plate here moves that direction. So I'll leave that there. Okay, so that Okay, well, that matches that. Ah, do I have to match symbols? So that matches that. That matches that. Oh, look at that. So now that goes down. Okay, so it doesn't go down when I'm on this symbol. When I go to this side here, that presses it down. Okay. So this one, oh, this is starting to move now. So this, imagine if I turn this here, it would want to go to, that might make sense. Oh, it goes that way. Okay. Oh, did you hear that? Oh. Guys, there's a little mechanism that when I pushed this in, this raised up. Oh, it went back down. That's pretty cool. Okay, so it must be weighted. Okay. Oh, and it's a tool now. And there's like a little keyhole in there. That's pretty cool. So is this a key then? Oh. That's supposed to come out. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> and I look in there, and I see, I can see something in there. I'm not sure how that made this go up and down. Okay, so that's now all the way that side. Like this slides over to do I have wrong? Oh, it goes to the other side. There originally. Okay, so maybe I need to switch over there. Oh, and do notice that the side there is a little flat. So I'm assuming if you look at that side, so I think it was made to actually go over to interact there, so that tells me that's probably the right place. Oh, and this came out. Okay, so that didn't come out before. Let me put that back in and push this back over. Okay, so this actually released that by pushing that over there. Releases this out. Okay. Okay, let's see. So we got Oh, now we, this one goes down. You can see that there is something right here. 
Oh, hold on a second. I just had a thought. This goes into this, I think. Ah, and then so you're supposed to actually use this for the key. Now I can push this into here. That's pretty fun. That's pretty cool. Let me look at there's treasures in here. Okay, so let's look and see what our treasure is, guys. Okay, if I can get it out. All right, we got a little piece of parchment. We have a little coin of sorts. So we have a gold one and a stone one. And they're exactly the same. Huh, I wonder what that's about. Okay, so those two things. So let's take a look at what the paper says. Oof, smells burnt. <laughs> you can tell it was distressed a little bit. Oh, you know, it smells a little bit like coffee. And sometimes people use coffee, I think, or tea to stain parchment um, to make it look older. Not to ruin the illusion, because we all know that this is really old parchment in this reality that we're in right now. A day later, a week. Hard to tell in the steady blue glow of the falls we had found in the bottom. Eventually, a key grew restless. And when we did crawl back out to see a clear sky, a small town had blossomed near the forest that surrounded our cave. For days we hid ourselves. For days we hid outside the town, watching the people speak their strange gibberish. We saw cruelty plenty, but also kindness. And those we saw as worthy, we brought them to our cavern and shared the secret of the water. Each day they drank and were healed. They drank and never tired, drank and lived without ending. Our new family grew, and that family made more family, and then more. Our city expanded in size and knowledge and wonder. What you can create with a forever at your hand. At times, I would walk the newly constructed structures that line the cavern floor and see seven, eight, or even nine generations of near strangers living in our cavern home, our city, our, our loon. It is good. Okay, so still a little mysterious. This is, I guess, the people that buried this treasure in this ancient civilization. And it actually speaks to what these Sim what these symbols uh, were meaning. So uh, this is the water going down into to their home. Uh, this is their cavern city, the land above and beneath. Not sure. So some of this stuff I still got to decipher. I don't know all the answers here, guys. But I will say that was a pretty fun puzzle. I'm not sure if I just fiddled with it enough to figure it out, which is just fine because it's just like any other other me uh, mechanical uh, sequential discovery puzzle, you do that, or whether the glyphs were actually meant to instruct us how to solve it. Uh, I'll read the reset and probably they'll tell me, because he did send a paper with it here, which says, this sheet is not part of the puzzle. Don't open until after the puzzle is completed. And actually, I'm gonna do that right now, just in case there's something I can share with you guys. Ah, and really, I'm glad I did. Okay, congratulations and thank you for solving a puzzle box in the Very City Saga. I hope you're enjoying this experiment of mixing puzzles, world building, and storytelling. There are three different experiences in the story-based puzzle box series. They can be enjoyed individually or as a set, with each puzzle telling a part of a larger story of the buried city and the people exploring it. While each 3D printed box shares some visual elements, each function completely differently. Micah Sawyer, and then here's his email. If anybody wants to contact him, see if you can get yourself a puzzle or to ask him if he'll send me the first one that I missed. So 
Box three is the Buried Vault, a longer, larger, and more complex nonlinear sequential discovery puzzle that completes this chapter of the story. Yeah, I need to get myself one of these. Um, this is pretty cool looking too, look at that. So I'm gonna have to see if I can get one of those and one of these and uh, you guys see if you can get them too and if you do and you get them before me, send them to me so I can solve it, all right. All right, Micah. My hat off to you, sir. This was an amazing puzzle. Yeah, the puzzle box itself isn't the most elaborate puzzle box, but that is far from the point. The point is that the detail that went into making this immersive experience is mind blowing. The amount of time that was put into this. Now we could sit and we could try to nitpick little things that why it wasn't perfect. For instance, why would an ancient civilization write in English and you know, especially when they were using the runes to make the words. But I don't care. I really don't care because uh, I was having so much fun with this. To be frank with you, this was just the right amount of solve that allowed it to be enjoyable with all of the elements involved with the making of the environment. I hope that you guys can get your hands on either this or one of the other two puzzles in the saga. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed solving this puzzle through my eyes, and I will see you back here on the next one. Goodbye for now.